Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to a special edition of Celebrating Act 2 with my partner, John Coleman. And, um, well, why don't you get right into who's our amazing guest today? We do. And it is a special edition. As you know, um, Art and I went to Cinecon with Manny Pacheco, shot a dozen interviews or so, but we missed the one guy we wanted to get. And that's what today is. We're going to interview the president of Cinecon, Stan Taffel. Now, Stan is a, not only a president of Cinecon, film historian, big time film preservationist, uh, but he is also a three time Emmy Award winner as an actor. So, um, and as you can imagine, he's in great demand for interviews uh, for his specialty about films and histor historic film history and things like that. So let's welcome Stan Taffel. There he is. Well, hello, guys. It's a pleasure to finally get a chance to talk to you two. I'm, yeah, sorry. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry we missed you at Cinecon. We did huh. search for you, but I think you were having drinks in the basement. Of Actually, the, uh... <laughs> I, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was actually a good boy during Cinecon. I had to be. Um, at Cinecon, I am the captain of show business, and yes. I don't know what's happening from one minute to the next where I'm needed. And that several times you guys said, hey, can we do the interview now? And I kept saying, oh, why don't you get that celebrity? I'll I'll, I'll be here. I'll be right back. And, and it never worked out. But I've been watching your show, and I love it. What Thank you've been you. doing for us, and I—that's when I said, "Please, let's just get together." And oh no, no, no! <laughs> it's it's really for our viewers. Um, we just love taking them to places that they can't go without our cameras. So, uh, uh, and by the way, you and Manny are great friends, and he was very disappointed that we <laughs> didn't catch up to you. So. I know, I know. By the way, John, uh, before we quickly, we we're going to go into Cinecon, uh, but um, Stan is such a fascinating guy. One of the things I found out during researching, among other things, was that you have a, a collection and you have a whole website on scores from the silent movie era. And it's just absolutely fascinating, your commitment to all the stuff that people are forgetting and uh, shouldn't forget. So uh, we know you're an archivist and a, a, a preservationist, but uh, uh, go, go S-T-A-N-T-A-F-F-E-L, Go Google it and find out all the amazing stuff he's done. Right. All right. Without further ado, because we want to get to Cinecon. Go ahead, John. All right. Now, Stan, one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you is because you have this overview that nobody else could really give us. We talked to people about what they were doing, what they were presenting, and awards they were getting, things like that. But you have this overview of what Cinecon really is. So help me help define why Cinecon is a different kind of film festival. Oh. I'd be happy to. You know, there are film festivals out there in the world where if you want to see Gone with the Wind or The Wizard of Oz or Casablanca, you can go to those festivals and, and they're great festivals. But if you want to go to a festival that shows films made by those actors in those movies or the writers and the directors and the people behind the scenes, you come to Cinecon. Yeah. We run the films that don't often get to be seen, certainly on the big screen. And every year we spend several months scouring the archives to find the films that have not played for a long time. And in quite a few cases, films that haven't been seen since their initial release because no one bothered to preserve them until now. And that's what's so beautiful about our festival that it's a guarantee that if you sit for five days and see every single thing we present first of all you need a medal for sitting through all that stuff <laughs> but just as importantly you will definitely see films that you have never seen before that's oh, yeah. what's so special as yeah. a matter of fact you saw films and i know you talked to my good friend rob stone who yeah. you know he's a he's been a friend for like 35, 40 years, maybe. I shouldn't say that. We were teenagers when we met. But, you know, I asked him, would you want to do a show at Cinecon? Because he's from California. And since he lives, you know, in uh, Culpeper, it's a, 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 a far distance. But he said, oh, Stan, I'm there. So yeah. he booked a hotel room and he put together the film collection. And everybody loved watching every single film comedy that he showed. Oh, amazing, you know? amazing. And he actually had an example of the early Babe Hardy, uh, Oliver mm -hmm. Hardy, before Stan Laurel. So it, yeah. these are gems. Every one of the mm -hmm. films that you did, how do you, 
how do you choose the films? How do you get these films? Thank goodness we have wonderful relationships with the studios and archives and personal friendships with many of them. So it's not like we're just making cold calls and trying to find out what they have. Yeah. We're pretty much on the cusp of knowing what's being preserved and what is being looked into and if we have a chance at uh, running it. Now, for the most part, we get most of the films that we want to see, but occasionally there's one that isn't ready. For instance, I had a list of films from one of the archives that I was desperate to see, and it turns out they have not preserved them onto safety film stock because they're still on nitrate stock and they haven't digitized them yet. Oh, so boy. We, we have to wait. You know, it's getting late in the day and every year that passes is another year that a film is starting to possibly decay. And there's just not enough people in this industry that is allowing the work to be done. So there are films that unfortunately, I think we may lose time and we yeah. won't be able to get them. We have about 78% of all film that is, I hate to use the word lost, but it's basic, I call it MIA, because you never know what's going to uh, come to light. Just uh, two days ago, my wonderful, sweet friend, Suzanne Lloyd, Harold Lloyd's granddaughter, mm -hmm. gave you, um, they, she gave to UCLA a 28 millimeter print of one of Harold Lloyd's earliest one real comedies, which was thought to be lost. And wow. it turns out that the film is in pretty good shape and they're gonna do a restoration and a preservation on it. And I hope we get to run it at Cinecon as soon as possibly next year, I don't uh, know. But every film we lose, sometimes yeah. we hear wonderful stories about films that we've gained. Yeah. And that's a wonderful feeling that pe enough people care. So we're gonna to try to fight the clock as best we can. Yeah, 28 hmm. millimeters. That's now that's going back some. Well, now 28 millimeter is the very first home movie format way back when. That was the first one, not 16 millimeter or 8 millimeter. Those came later, but literally 28 millimeter. I have a couple of 28 millimeters in my collection. I can't run them. I don't have projectors to run right. them, but I am making arrangements for them to be preserved because I think one of them is a lost film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you uh, besides being president, the, the head marker, <laughs> the uh, I'm the macha. That's it. The head, the head macha. Um, you are on the the uh, programming committee. You select the films, or oh yeah, go out begging for them. It sounds yeah. like. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I I have a wonderful team of people that uh, work with me on on doing that. I I am not a dictator. I don't order things to be done, and I don't shoot things down. Um, there are certain films that I know some of my team don't agree on, um, but. I know that we have so many people that come to Cinecon. There are certain films that I know our audience is going to get a big kick out of. For instance, Brian Cooper, who's my, my gosh, he's my cohort in this whole thing. He's, uh, he's like family to me. You know, Brian loves the Republic Pictures studio. Yes. And so, you know, he made it his mission to try to get Columbia, uh, Columbia, to try to get Republic Pictures on and Paramount owns them. Well, we have great relationships with Paramount. And so we were able to run them. He loves Judy Canova. And there are a few people on our team that always question that. And I tell them, <laughs> I'm sorry, Judy was a big hit the previous years. We're oh. going to run another Judy Canova. And you know what? We, we had Diana Canova and we had uh, Julie the other daughter and they've come and introduced their their mom's films and yeah. to see those on a big screen and the joy that the family gets by seeing their she, mom yeah and what a wonderful unique talent she was also oh. i i don't want uh, i don't want people to get the wrong idea um that uh cinecon is only for obscure films you oh, no. you could you, you have this wonderful uh section on uh, kinescopes uh, oh yes, this year, yes. and that's uh, that's many of us uh, in our audience right. grew up with with the TV, the lost TV era. Uh, how did yeah. you wind up uh, with so many wonderful examples of uh, kinescopes? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, behind me there, I have uh, probably a hundred kinescopes that I I can see right down the background over there. Oh, I wow. get an amazing charge out of seeing 
these kinescopes because before the advent of videotape, the only way to save or preserve a live television show was to film a television set. Yes. With, a, with a motion picture camera. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's basically the idea. And because of my love, undying passion for Jack Benny, when I found out growing up that there were non-filmed shows of Jack Benny's that he did live, and I started to see the kinescopes, I, I, I was blown away because I thought, that's the way I've always wanted to see Jack Benny, reacting in front of a live audience. And so I started to collect them when I found them. And people over the years who know that I have a pension for the kinescopes would contact me and say, hey, can you help preserve this? So yeah. I have a lot of films that I have curing in liquid to make sure that they're soft and pliable so I can get them digitized. And so, you know, I've been working Cinecon, you know, since the 90s. And uh, our former president, who's no longer living, I told him I wanted to start running kinescopes at Cinecon. But. He was very reticent about it because he did not want anything to happen to uh, the uh, structure of Cinecon because we basically are a film festival. And I was able to get two kinescopes on over the years. But after he passed away unexpectedly and I took over the festival, um, I wanted to make sure that I gave some love to these kinescopes. Yes. So. The first year we were at the Egyptian theater and back then they had two theaters. They had their regular theater that seats 600 people and they have the Spielberg theater, which only sat 80 people. So I said, I'm going to run a Kinecon at Cinecon program in the 80 seat theater. So it won't take anything away from the main theater. Well, the film ends. I try to go into the theater. I cannot get into the theater that is running my Kinecon at Cinecon. There were at count 158 people in an 80 seat theater. It looked like a scene out of um, Soil and Green, where, where people are sitting on laps and sitting on the steps and standing on the wall by the walls. And it was fantastic. They loved it. And then the next year, I did it in that same theater in the small theater and the same thing happened and people said stan we love that you want to preserve the films of cinecon but please we all want to see these kinescopes and yeah. people were denied in so then we said all right we're going to do it in the big theater and it's actually become just about the most popular uh, segment of cinecon because people want to see these things that they either have never seen before or they want to at least see them with a lot of people because sure. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I remember I, I ran the sequence from the Jack Benny show, the live sequence when he and Giselle McKenzie did their violin duet of getting to know you. Oh, my it, Lord. It, and I ran it for all these people who were I, have, I haven't heard that kind of laughter in a yeah. movie theater in my entire life than <laughs> watching everybody listening to Jack Benny and Giselle. So <laughs> I know I was right. It's one of those things yeah. where someone said, you're crazy to do that, but I guess I am crazy. And everybody else who comes to Cinecon is crazy too. We have well, a motto. We have a motto at Cinecon. If it's rare, we'll show it. Hmm. And, and you proved well, that, you and you know, proved that with your, uh, uh, we, we just had a time to go to all the depth, which means that people should show up at Cinecon next year as well. But you had Soundies, uh, which was a remarkable, uh, sir, I, quite frankly, uh, I, I'm a fairly decent student of this stuff. And I had never heard of them before. So it's, well, it's really yeah. amazing that you have collected all this stuff and that you're showing it, you're archiving it, you're preserving it, and you're showing it to us. Thank you. And that would be Mark Cantor, who put yeah, that yeah. Soundies program together, who is, he was Hugh Hefner's personal archivist, and he always comes to Cinecon ready to do a fantastic yeah. special program. Yeah. Terrific, terrific uh, guy, great collection, and uh, what a wonderful piece of history. Yeah. Kind of a combination of, uh, the, the end of uh, the studio system and the beginning of television and that mm -hmm. was, they, they were jukebox videos. I just love them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Have you ever seen one of the machines that plays those things? No. The panoramas? No. They, they... they exist. You can go online and take a look at them. And it's, it's I mean, it, it was a video jukebox, just like you said. You'd put your money in and yeah. pick the song you want, and then you would get to see them. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it went from the panorama machines to the scopatones of the late 50s and early 60s. Yeah. Though, and I collect scopatones, which we may do a program on uh, one year at Cinecon. They're all in Technicolor, 16 millimeter like Technicolor. Yeah. And, yeah. The, you know, it, all of this makes sense because so many of us baby boomers grew up with 
uh, Jack Benny and uh, uh, the folks like that. On uh, we never saw their shows later. I Love Lucy was done on film, right? So you know they were preserved, but all of the live television, um, Red Skelton, Jack Benny, those guys. It was great to see yeah. on kinescope. Um, uh -huh. But you know, you know, the, besides their special programs like that. The feature films that yes. that I would really love to cover those, sure, uh, and let people know, you know, some the variety. It's such a great variety. My favorite was Tom Mix. Uh, that particular Tom Mix film, uh, we ran in tribute to my late friend Bob Burchard, who was the previous president of Cinecon. He wrote the best book on Tom Mix. Tom Mix, uh, you know, the King of the Cowboys, and he also had a tremendous Tom Mix motion picture collection. This wow. film was found and preserved after Bob passed away. So he never got to see it. So before the film started, I got up on stage and I brought Brian Cooper with me and Stella Grace, who's been a part of Cinecons for 45 years. And we stood there as I basically said, this one's for Bob. And people like that because a lot of people in our audience remember Bob and our festival for me, it's not only about the people that made the films, but it's about the people who saved the films. Yes. And Bob was a very big proponent of that. And I don't want his name to fade away into no one's memory. So I try to use that name and other names as I did throughout the whole festival, talking about the people that actually saved the films. Well, you know something we've, you've given us a, a taste and it's, we actually, quite frankly, could go on for hours, but that's not our audience, okay? And this was a great taste of what was. And uh, right now, I'm going to put you on the spot, Stan. We want you back next year before Cinecon 59. And tease yeah. the tease it a month or so before so that people, who, especially in the uh, Southern California area, uh, won't miss this wonderful, wonderful festival. So uh, can you tease us at all? Do you have anything next year that you can tease us for right now? Just, you know, in a minute. Um, well, I uh, I shouldn't say this, but I figure what the heck, you know, then I'll watch the show a few months before. But a very dear friend of mine named Dave Strohmeyer, who is the king of Cinerama, did a, a massive restoration on the most elusive and yet my favorite Elvis Presley film. He did a restoration on loving you and uh my dream was to get it on this year but there wasn't enough time to but next year i hope we're going to get to run the the, the premiere restoration because no one has seen it and i'm going to have the uh, director and writer hal Cantor's daughter introduce the movie so we'll have her come to do that Ooh, that will be a choice yeah. and i'm telling choice. you I'm already getting pushback from a few people on my team who said Elvis at Cinecon. And I look at them and say, you wait. When they yes. see a 22-year-old Elvis Presley with Elizabeth Scott in that movie, yeah. people are going to maybe become uh, fans of Elvis. Yeah. You know, And we're going to have more Cinecon at Cinecon. We're going to also have uh, uh, more restorations. There were some other restorations. As a matter of fact, I believe my favorite silent film actress, Colleen Moore, there are some films that are awaiting to be seen. And uh, because of my wonderful friend on the team, Joe Ransky, who knew Colleen, who has scoured the world and located some of these films, I hope that we'll be able to bring Colleen Moore to uh, the people at Cinecon. But they don't have to wait. They can go to our website, which is cinecon.org. And then they can see what we did at this schedule for that you saw. But we're also – I'm going to be adding some video to uh, the website in the coming months, including okay. uh, some old interviews with some of our celebrities from the past uh, 25 years or so so people can see how they were honored when we did Cinecon in various venues. Yeah. And it's just a wonderful – I mean, it's my passion. Next to my wife, it is my greatest passion. And I'll be trying to save films until I'm no longer here. And I hope somebody will fill in the void at that time. But I, I'm planning on going nowhere, so I'm going to be around for a long time. Excellent, excellent. Well, now, besides um, the Tom Mix film, which was a silent feature film, mm -hmm. uh, you had probably a dozen, I'm guessing, about a dozen silent features, and they were wonderful. I, I just want to – Take a couple. What his one, Constance Talmadge, oh. and a temperamental wife. Yeah. Here's another one, Lillian Gish in Annie. Annie Laurie. Laurie. And and, and uh, by the way, in Annie Laurie, um, if you looked really carefully, you would see a Scottish kilted John Wayne as an extra. 
No kidding. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Uh, Jackie Coogan film, Daddy. Introduced introduced by my friend Keith Coogan, who is Jackie's grandson. And he he actually came to the festival just to introduce the film because he had to go to an autograph show. But he wanted to be there for that's his wonderful. grandfather and, and for me as a friend. So that's I'm wonderful. grateful to him. Well, Couple more so, titles in the silent category. Jackie, the, Jackie Coogan. John, John, um, John, yeah. save them. Okay. We're going to have links to Cinecom. Uh, we're going to have stand back. Uh, for maybe intermediate because I want to do something about all the, the I, I know that you in addition to uh, your Emmy uh, performance and so on and so forth you've been doing documentaries and other activities which uh, I just find absolutely fascinating and would like to tell our audience so, so we're going to try to get you back in between now and the next Cinecon and also a, as a preview to the next Cinecon so uh, thank you very much for uh, this uh, review on, Hold yeah. on, Art. I'm I'm not going to let you close this out oh. unless we get Stan to talk about the four honorees for the Legacy Award. These were wonderful, wonderful, iconic actors. Now we got to we got to actually interview Jimmy Hunt, who was yes. the child star of Invaders from Mars, and we got to see some of the footage. It was just wonderful. But right. we didn't get get to catch up with uh, Mitzi Gaynor or George Chakiris or Patty um, McCormick. McCormick, thank right. you very much for filling that in. Right. Tell us about how you arranged to get them to show up and and accept the honor. Sure. Of well, the Legacy Award. Um, Mitzi Gaynor was uh, gotten to us by Brian Cooper who worked on a documentary about Mitzi Gaynor, and he also uh, knows Michael Feinstein. And so that was a perfect marriage. Michael did the interview, and it was wonderful to have Mitzi finally come to Cinecon. We had, <laughs> we had George Jakiris, who was there. It was brought to us by Brian Cooper, but when George showed up, he looked at me like he knew me, and I said, George, you remember those 15 years we watched movies every Tuesday at uh, Ken Kramer's place? And he's like, oh, my God. So and Brian looked at looked at like, oh, my God, you really do know him. Know him. And then Patty McCormick, <laughs> Patty McCormick was brought to us by uh, our dear friend and the man who designs our our, our Cinecon programs and um, who actually paid for the awards. He, he It's out of his generosity. And that was uh, Richard Atkins. And he yeah. knew Patty. But the thing about Patty, uh, she was interviewed by her nephew, and he was so taken with Cinecon that I received a check in the mail. He wanted to do a donation, and it was a very sizable donation to say thank you for honoring my aunt and thank you for helping to preserve because we ran Kathy O, which no one has seen in right. decades. And right. now, hopefully, Universal is going to get on the bandwagon, maybe do a little preservation so it can be released, so the world can actually see an, uh, a film with Patty that is not the bad seed, you yes. know? Yeah. And she and, she yeah. really had a wonderful career um, oh, yeah. beyond, beyond being that cute teenager and uh, oh, yeah. that she was famous yeah. for. She did yeah. soap operas. She did other films and TV movies. Oh, yeah. And we had other celebrities in the audience that came. Past honorees were there that got to mm. see films. And, and that's what we love. They're like family to us. Do washed off anything? A policeman can still find if it's there. If he sprinkles some powder on the place. Will the place really turn blue? And if you just sit there and don't do anything, then you're as guilty as Bruce. Wait. Dan, uh, I, I, before we go, I want to just mention to everybody that the posters for all your films are on your website, uh, cinecon.org. Yes. And if you go down the website and you look at all those films that were on this year's programs, mm -hmm. you're going to see what a wide variety from different eras, um, uh, yeah. silent features, Talking features, cowboy films, yeah. romances, films yeah. you've never ever heard of, films mm -hmm. you're familiar with, um, and and let's not even forget about the shorts, yeah. about a dozen shorts, cartoons, and other shorts. Just what a wonderful yeah. program! And also, uh, we premiered or re-premiered a the very first talking serial that was ever made, um, the King of the Congo. 
that Eric Grayson did a massive restoration on. And he actually enlisted some of his friends to uh, supply some of the voices for which he was missing dialogue. And I was one of the voices. (laughs) Mr. Restoration. Yeah, right. (laughs) That's great. That's wonderful. Anyway, thank you for uh, what Cinecon does. Thank you. And all the folks behind the scenes. I know you have a large staff of volunteers who work very hard. When do you start planning the next one? I've already started planning the next one. (laughs) No sleep. As a matter of fact, I can't get this. I sleep with this now. I can't get my badge off of my (laughs) neck. Surgically implanted. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Stan. We're going to have uh, uh, all the contact information uh, down below uh, in the description of this video. It's been a pleasure. Uh, We definitely want to have you back on what Stan is all about beyond uh, uh, Cinecon. Uh, There's enough in there. You know, I could, you know, maybe we'll just select uh, the 25 minor things that you've done over the years, which (laughs) which anybody would be glad to have on IMDb. Trust me. Uh, you're you're too kind. You're too kind. And next time, if you want, I'll bring clips so you can have exclusive clips to things to show. We would love well, that. Thank you. So anyway, thank you again. Uh, pleasure uh, finally meeting you because we just didn't get to see you right. at Cinecon. Uh, and so this has been real fun and yeah. look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.